Live for one of the last times at this year's 2022 ZBrush Summit, I am your host, Louis Tucci, with my friend and compatriot and fellow ZBrusher, Ian Robinson, to my left. I'm Louis Tucci once again. We are here live. The moment is upon us, Ian. Yeah, it is. We've come to the last official presentation. We've got Sea Beast Netflix hit film. What a joy. Oh, yeah. I feel terrible for those creatures. They're hunting them down. <laughs> <laughs> but today but we're going to get behind the veil. It's for our entertainment. So we're the gonna last presentation, wow. we had, what do you think? Dude, amazing. Well, let's I, have it. I, I mean, come on. Seriously, like the level of detail that Raph was able to bring to his statue and really talk about that process and how he was able to push those elements and also, too, just push through and have some perseverance about how he wanted to approach it because there's not always an easy solution to create the assets that you need. And so he made everything by hand. Yeah. And he had a lot of really cool techniques and tips for it. So it was a lot of fun to go through and just kind of watch his mind work and explain everything that, um, well, artists every day struggle with, you know? We all have that same I think kind of vein where it's like, how do I get exactly this it. done? And he was able to kind of break that down. And I'm sure so many people like myself just love to watch other artists come in and explain that because it helps us get through that process. So, you know, I, I told him on the way out, I said, uh, most importantly was the idea of overcoming this concept that things need to look good from the beginning as we were alluding to. But the real, the real issue there was that he, he started the demonstration of a hand with just some cubes. And that's the message uh, across these days. We hope that this has been a clear message for you all watching at home and around the globe. We're happy to do this to, to be able to inspire and introduce, actually introduce and inspire and help to integrate ZBrush into your pipeline or into your life. If you're a newcomer, you, what you've seen a moment ago was the use of just a simple cube to make something yeah. really cool. And I think we can all get behind that. Uh, we are going to do uh, up next, like I said, we're going to have Beast, the team from Netflix. It's going to be Charles Ellison and uh, Leticia Gillett, who is a, a fellow uh, Noman friend of mine. So um, yeah. we'll run the credits and we'll come back after this. Wave to the people at home, Ian, for the last time here. We'll be back in a minute with our... Well, 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 from remote locations around the globe, they yeah. gather for the Zebra Summit. Ian Robinson to my left, Louis Tucci here live with Charles Ellison and Leticia Gillett. Good to see you all waving hello emphatically. <laughs> Good to see you too. Yeah, how, you are you, how are you two doing today? A, a bit crazy, not going to lie. Uh, we, this almost didn't happen for us. Uh, we had a situation where Mother Nature threw a curveball. I was all set up at home, ready to go. Leticia and I have been communicating, getting excited, and my power goes out. No. Um, luckily, luckily, we have high winds here in Los Angeles right now, but yeah. luckily, uh, Leticia's husband, Chris, amazing 3D artist, has a really great setup here that I was able to just kind of pack up my tower bring it over, scrambling down to the wire, got it set up. Um, you should have saw us. You would have been proud of us, but we're, we're we, ready to go. You said oh. it. We are very proud. Yeah, and Chris, thank proud. you so much for helping to make this segment a reality. Put her there for <laughs> Absolutely. Chris. Absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> a t-shirt no. in the mail for you, old sport. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe even a hat. It wouldn't be possible without it. Letitia, what's going on there? We're good. I have Charles house. here in my house now. Yeah, right. Yeah. I'm not expecting <laughs> house. Share in space. That's always nice. We're in the same studio. So <laughs> it looks That's great. Right. You got some. She got some Disney characters behind yeah, you. Got the a nice, a fun, a fun bit of collectibles back there. I love That's that. Great. The inspiration oh, yeah. is amazing. <laughs> I want to break out into the song, but I won't because we'll we'll get uh, we'll get in trouble. Please sing, please, Louis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hi, everyone in the world. Well, we're glad that you're here with us today. Yeah, it has been crazy winds here in Los Angeles, so we're. We're happy to have you. We're safe and sound inside the Mobian green screen hangar here. Uh, very safe, thank goodness. And the feed is continuing nice. to be uh, broadcast around the world. But uh, let me just introduce you properly. Charles Ellison started a career as a young boy, it says. And uh, originally you were uh, from Venezuela growing up with movies and cartoons at the epicenter of your being. And uh, around, uh, I'm going to age you now and maybe age us all a little bit. But, uh, <laughs> in, uh, in 93, you and Paul Gabriel have this in common, the Jurassic Park moment of truth where uh, you say, is it real? <laughs> that's right it, that's it, right are, are they real and then somebody says no it's a film and that is basically how you got started and um and then toy story pushed you one step over the edge as paul mentioned yesterday so you have that very same parallel trajectory um you've worked for dreamworks and now you're with netflix and uh, spire studios as well so tell us a little bit about uh about you know what you've been up to and what you've been doing yeah absolutely uh i i don't know if it's uh 
a good time to maybe share a screen. I just have a, a, a few things of. You may, if you wish. Yeah, dictate you're, my... you're, you're in charge. And then we'll move over to Leticia. Uh, okay. In, in Do I just time. go ahead and share a screen from the Zoom or is it already set to go? Let me see here. Uh, it, yeah. I think it should be should be good there. There, there go. we go. Yeah, we Wonderful. see it. Oh, yes. Okay. Okay. Awesome. Um, well, I mean, let me uh, just, you know, elaborate on that a little bit. And, and thank you, Louis. That's a great intro. Um, I've I've really benefited from having just uh, tremendous opportunities, you know, uh, like I mentioned there, influenced by movies since I was a boy. Um, movies for me, you know, just uh, kept me company, man, you know, in so many different ways. When you're an only child and you need to find things to do and you're done playing outside, like, cartoons and movies that's where you kind of get lost and um so so really for me it's uh uh a very nice journey to discover that i ended up working within the entertainment industry and and creating characters uh jurassic park and toy story were so pinnacle for me in terms of like even understanding this as a as a goal you know as something attainable so um went to traditional art school uh like so many you know that that are in this industry and uh, fast forward a little bit, you know, my I got my big break joining DreamWorks. I started at DreamWorks as a as a 3D modeler. Um, tremendous group there. Uh, I mean, just immense talent and uh, a lot of lifelong friends that I've garnered over there. And and it's uh, the kind of place that uh, really inspired. You know, you're surrounded by so many great talented people. Um, had an opportunity to you know work on so many different films. You know, the Dragons franchise, uh, uh, Kung Fu Panda, many others. Um, as I developed there as an artist, you know, I, I, you know, got an opportunity to join, you know, the ranks as in leadership, and I was one of the heads of modeling there for for a few years. Uh, Trolls and and Trolls uh, Two, Trolls World World Tour, uh, were kind of my uh, uh, first two projects that I supervised. Uh, I had the pleasure of, you know, having Leticia on my team, and you know, she, when you have rock stars like that, it's uh, everything comes really easy. Um, and yeah. yesterday seeing Caleb Bryce, you know, making his presentation for Pixar, it's, uh, just for me, it's such a small industry and, you know, he's another artist that I, uh, tremendously respect and, and had the opportunity to work with as well. Um, after I, uh, left DreamWorks and, uh, ventured out over to Netflix, uh, you know, uh, Judge Schlanger, producer for the Sea Beast, uh, someone I've worked with before at DreamWorks, you know, he, uh, him and I first talked about CBs and what they're doing, and it was so exciting. Um, Netflix was at at that time, you know, really growing and and doing so much in terms of all the projects they had uh, going on. Um, I learned a little bit about more about it, and you know, when I uh, had the opportunity to join, um, it was really tremendous for me because it was my first foray, really living more on the viz dev side of things, more in art, even if at DreamWorks you get that opportunity as well in the modeling side of things. It's, uh, uh, to me, this was a departure of making sure I'm thinking just about art, not not being too precious about things and de helping develop the creative. And uh, uh, yeah, and so, you know, that was a tremendous project that we'll, I'm excited to talk about. And, you know, currently I am now at a Spire Animation Studios where we're kind of the new kids on the block. We're small but mighty, uh, but like a that. tremendous group that we are, uh, continuously growing. Um, and right now I'm serving as a kind of like a global character art director. So I uh, work on various features and, but right now it's all hands on deck on, on our first feature. Uh, what makes us, you know, really unique right now is we're uh, partnered with Epic and really embracing Unreal Engine uh, for Final Pixel and, and all that good hey, stuff. Hey, let me so stop you really quickly. We, we've embraced Unreal Engine as well. If you take a look at our set here, we've got uh, none other than our own uh, ZBrush friend and compatriot Anna Carolina and her team out in Florida. We get a wider view here. You'll get to see the unreal environment that Ian and I have been located in all day long and oh, ourselves yeah. and Paul Gibson. <laughs> so it's uh, it's all uh, it's all coming nice. together. It's good to hear you say that. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're getting more and more familiar with unreal here. <laughs> with these bigger projects as they go <laughs> bigger. Awesome, man. I mean, you know, that uh, kind of sums it up for me in a nutshell, you know, and um, and like I said, you know, just a tough act to follow with all the amazing presenters that you guys have had. Um, it's very interesting, you know, Leticia and I were talking a little bit earlier about uh, the things that, that other artists are sharing. And I just love to see, like, there's a lot of common thread and a lot of principles that, you know, hopefully we'll elaborate and, and share as well today. You know what, you said something very important. I wanted to give uh, an additional nod to Caleb Rice who left me a drawing 
yesterday <laughs> the drawing at the end of the presentation. I was so I was so happy uh, to have that. So Caleb, if you're watching, man, thank you so much again. Uh, really sweet, swell guy. It's good to have awesome. you, Letitia Gillett. Hello. Uh, a a fellow Nomen um, graduate and byproduct Correct. of the MIT of the CG world. We've been giving away those workshops. It's uh, it's been a while. Tell us what you've been up to and uh, and what's going on with you. Yeah, if you don't mind sharing my screen. Um, By all means, of course. I can I can kind of talk a little bit about it. Hi, everyone at home. And um, I think that's Charles' screen. Oh, yep. <laughs> there you go, Charles. We'll get back awesome. to you. Don't worry, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So uh, like Louis said, you know, I, I'm from Brazil. And um, I came to the U.S. about 11 years ago to a school that is my home forever called Nomen. And uh, I came to Nomen because, you know, since I was five, my dream was to work at Disney or in animation. And uh, after doing many research, I was like, okay, this is the school for me. So I came to Nomen, I did the two year program. And and then my career started here. Um, I started working at Blizzard on the Overwatch team. Shout out to everyone that worked with me there. It was an amazing, amazing experience. And I learned so much. Um, and then I got a, a, a contact from DreamWorks asking me. And, and Charles was actually the one who put my name to get hired. So I got my break on the animation because of Charles. So um, I came to DreamWorks and then Charles put me on his team. I work on a Trolls World Tour. And then I went to Crude's New Age. Um, after that, uh, Charles left to Netflix and then he brought me to Netflix as well. <laughs> and uh, I, I was working on a different project at a time and then um, CB's like uh, was taking off and they needed a bit more help as well. So Charles was like, all right, let's bring Leticia in. So I got to work on the Sea Beast and Netflix and then I got the call from Mickey, and you know when Mickey calls, you gotta go. So <laughs> Mickey called like, oh, oh, and I was like, let's go. And then um, I got to Disney, and I worked on Encanto, and I was a character modeling supervisor on Strange Roll that's coming out now, November twenty third. Like a boss, look at you. You, you, you <laughs> hey, hold on a second. Let's pause the boss did anyone, Yeah, did anyone hear that? She dreamed a dream, and it was great. It's fair to say that it's happened. Yeah, it's happened. Wow. That's right. It's a true joy for us. Five, so it took me uh, thirty years to get here, but I'm here. Well, if they're listening yeah. out there in TV land, uh, dreams take time. This is a testament to that. We're so happy. It does. Here. It doesn't mean that I was having the best time throughout all this time, right? It's just like <laughs> whatever you go, you make it work, and you make your dream in there as well, right? Absolutely. So um, I had my the best time at DreamWorks. Most of my friends that I see all the time, they are from people I made friendships at DreamWorks, like Caleb. Caleb is like a brother from a different mother. And uh, <laughs> brother Caleb, as I call him. Brother Caleb, brother, yeah. Brother Caleb. So here you can see Caleb. This was the trolls uh, party that we had. So it's, you can see Caleb here. And this was our trolls team uh, for a long time. And Charles was uh, the supervisor on that. So wow. yeah, that was kind wow. of my journey here in the US so far. And Nomen, I, I study at Nomen and I also. Uh, taught at Nomen and I did live streaming for Nomen and events for Nomen. So Nomen's going to be in my life probably until the end of time. Yeah. So that's why I put it here. <laughs> that's a good one. Same, same here. Always at the cornerstone and the foundation. On the yeah. I just, yeah. It's yeah, just a uh, family, you know? So uh, absolutely. So shout out to everybody uh, over <laughs> there. Uh, Max, Darren, Brian, and uh, Alex, uh, Alex, and the yep. rest of nobody. If I forget to say someone's name, I'm thinking. Of Eric Keller actually was my my ZBrush teacher. Before him, I didn't know ZBrush. Funny anything. thing, me too, huh? Well, yeah. Now we're really so Eric aging Keller. Eric Keller. You know? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> he's about he as old as the mummies. Everything in ZBrush, so absolutely big hugs yeah. to him. Yeah, splendid. We hope he's watching. Well, we'll we'll hand it over <laughs> to you guys for your formal presentation here and let you talk more about things, and uh, we'll bow out of the way and, and let you take it away for a few minutes. Yeah, awesome. right. And as always, awesome. too, we might get a couple questions in chat, but, you know, we'll let you go through your presentation a little bit. And then, you know, if you if you want, I can fire them off as they come up or we can wait a little bit more towards the end. Up to you. Let me know how it works for you. OK. OK. okay. Thanks so much. And nobody got. Yeah. De nada. <laughs> <laughs> All right. right, Charles. 
they can yeah, are. Yeah, we could, um, I guess we can switch over to my screen for a second. Um, you, you know, it's, it's interesting because uh, the notion of 3D modelers uh, working in art, I think is uh, uh, a really fascinating thing to talk about because, you know, when you think about what the end product is and it's, you know, uh, you're making 3D anim animated movies, uh, you want to see things in that medium as quickly as you can. Um, and I think a lot of different productions, you know, embrace that earlier on uh, these days than perhaps they did in in, in the past. Um, and, and that's something where I think, you know, artists such as Leticia and, you know, uh, myself really, really want to live in that space. And, and we we thrive there because uh, uh, it's it's something that we have a passion for. And um, what I wanted to first kind of open up the conversation with is like, how do we start this process? Like what normally is the way that things go? You know, do we start with a concept? Do is is do we just start from scratch? And um, it's truly a, a collaboration, you know, for sure, uh, that that we get to kind of uh, enjoy. So on Seabeast, uh, and by the way, uh, I, I think I speak for both uh, Leticia and myself when, you know, we say just thanks to Chris Williams, director, Judge Schlanger, uh, Steven Schweikert, uh, Matthias, uh, production designer, Matthias Lechner, and uh, our art director, Woon Young Jung. Uh, just a, amazing art team. So, I mean, it's, it's really incredible. But um, uh, I'm going to just kind of show a little bit of how we kind of start this process. And we'll talk through uh, not only a lot of tangible examples, but just more or less how the conversation gets going. Uh, uh, typically it's it's something like this you know we we get a very uh loose sketch sometimes a more thorough you know uh illustration of a character but that really captures the design um both leticia and i had the opportunity to work with tony Facilli, who's you know uh, the name precedes him you know he's a legend in the game and uh, knowing that you're going to work with someone like that, you want to bring forth your, <laughs> you know, your big, best effort you can. Um, and he couldn't be more humble and modest and easy to work with. The such real Italian a, such, stallion. <laughs> yeah, man, but, but such, such a kind, uh, kind soul. Um, but this was the first drawing that I had saw or that I had seen, uh, you know, uh, for Jacob, who is uh, uh, kind of the main hero. You know, we have two main character leads on on the show, and this was the the uh, the male hero. And we knew we wanted to capture something that had some kind of stylization to it. Uh, we didn't want to go as stylized, perhaps, as what you see here. Um, and this is where seeing things in the round, you know, you can start to establish those rules, break down uh, the things that, you know, we want to kind of pursue. So uh, this was literally on on the very first day. I was so anxious to jump in. Um, I just went and just kind of blocked out a bust. And uh, we're going to talk a little bit about how we approach it, you know, and the, the different ways that, uh, uh, to me at least, are, are really strong ways to kind of get started um, before you even think about any context or color or details or anything like that. Um, so I'm going to jump over to, to ZBrush real quick. And... Uh, you know, this this right here represents more of a this is definitely the final final result. This is <laughs> this is what all the hard work kind of brings you to. Um, and this is um, a great effort of collaboration, iterations, defining rules, finding what works, finding what doesn't. Um, and, you know, at the end of the day, we try to live uh, within ZBrush as much as we can at at this juncture, simply because it offers us so much fluidity flexibility to to really explore um so i'm gonna jump over here i, I tried to kind of piece together something that would kind of convey this i i wanted to find the original block outs for these characters and i failed to do so uh you know when you have things buried in your hard drive i probably just blew them away at some point but uh, i'm going to replicate a little bit of just the thought process around this stuff um and some of the other talks you guys have seen a lot of folks convey the notion of working with primitive forms, just being uh, very basic with how they approach a block out. Um, I pretty much almost exclusively always start with a uh, simple sphere. In fact, this is just the sphere that you get, uh, you know, from your Z tool library. And what I, what I like to do is uh, reconstruct the subdivisions down to like bare bones. Um, you know, I've been uh, teaching for many years as well uh, with the, uh, uh, online school called Anim School, and um, 
I feel like that has allowed me time to almost hear myself talk and wrap my head around even my own process and, and also being inspired and learning from others. Um, you know, Leticia being one, I, I, one of the first artists that actually gave me some great insight to, to what I'm going to get into here is, uh, Danny Williams, um, a point not only pusher. a good friend. Yeah. Point pusher, man. I mean, you can't go wrong with that guy in so many ways, you know, but, fire with that guy. If he's watching, uh, he's, he's Danny. <laughs> I hope he's watching. I hope he's watching, but, um, I, you know, I want to give him a nod here because, uh, he really exposed me to what ZBrush was capable of before I really embraced it. And, you know, you take what you learn from people like that and you're able to just kind of massage your process a little bit. So uh, very basic form, right? And what I like to do, you know, as I'm blocking this stuff in is quite literally just work with these planar, low poly representations. I establish what I like to refer to as upper hemisphere for the head, lower hemisphere, you know, just kind of isolating jaw up to up to the cheekbone and i'll even take these edges and you know more or less kind of start orienting them in a way that they might represent certain landmarks you know a cheekbone on this one here you know maybe just a brow ridge keep it very basic very simple the other thing i do at this stage before i really dive in is i typically set my canvas to be a lighter uh color uh, in the background and the reason i like to do that is because over here on the color swatches, you have the opportunity to kind of switch back and forth between two colors uh, if you don't have any textures assigned or anything like that. And so what I'll what I'll tend to do at this stage is just jump back and forth between silhouette uh, and just a regular shaded, you know, uh, kind of representation. Um, I don't get too fancy with uh, materials. I typically just use skin shade. Um, I do, yeah, I do have a version of skin shade that's a little bit less with spec, uh, very similar to what. Caleb was, was actually talking about yesterday. So the, uh, I know I'm doing something right. <laughs> um, but then as I kind of get going and understand a little bit of the shapes here, we start adding more context, right? I'll get into subdivisions, but I don't, I try not to rush, uh, too quickly into the details. And I think this is something that I notice. um, a lot of a lot of students will tend to re be really anxious to get into high res, just jump right into the sculpting. They they want to do what they see so many of the uh, the masters doing. You know, there's so many amazing artists out there that you know when they showcase their work, it's so detailed, so rich in fidelity. And I I really uh, force myself before I even think of getting to that step um, to understand the basic forms. So, you know, here I'll, you know, kind of take something, flush it out just a little bit more, and then slowly start adding context. And what's really fascinating about this is, you know, as I start evaluating silhouettes, we can start to just make uh, broader assumptions of what, what the feel of the character is like. And of course, I'm looking at art, looking at reference, being as honest to uh, the artwork as, as I can. Um, from this stage, it'll start to typically turn a corner where we get into something that now I'm introducing smaller shapes. To me, these are still primary shapes for the character because they impact the silhouette so strongly. So in the case of Jacob and, you know, many of the characters actually, uh, and, you know, Leticia is going to uh, show some amazing examples uh, of just how striking a lot of these silhouettes were. But I get into this and again, just massage in the form little by little, you know, these independent poly groups, I can, you know, mask them off. You know, I just try to work, you know, really easy with this stuff. It's so manageable to just push and pull. Um, one of the things that, that often I get asked is, you know, what brushes do you use and, and all that good stuff. I, I'll be the first to tell you, man, I, I am, uh, I probably use 10% if that of what ZBrush is capable of, and, and that's a shameful admission, but <laughs> no, it's, stop, it's, 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 yeah. <laughs> it's, it's really just to showcase like how vast of a tool it is. But for even uh, someone like me that I just maximize a small portion of it for, for what I need it for, um, you know, it's, it's just, it's amazing in that sense. So as I start adding a little bit more context, we get into more granularity here, you know, so additional forms and, uh, whether it's a naturalistic character, stylized character, a creature, um, it's all very much the same approach. I, I'm looking for what are the identifiable forms. Um, I can take this same setup right here of granularity and you can see at this stage, I've basically broken up the upper lip, lower lip. I've introduced, you know, just some uh, half spheres basically for, for the eyelids. 
um, all this stuff I can really massage and start to start to find, you know, the right proper forms. Um, I'll then start introducing subdivisions at this stage, you know, and I, and when I add the subdivisions, I typically do it one at a time. Um, I don't want to rush into anything too smooth, too quick. Um, mainly just out of, you know, uh, old dog, old tricks kind of things, but, you know, um, just trying to keep it really controlled. So I don't ever lose control. One of the notions I like to always kind of echo is you should always be in control of the geometry, not the other way around. And so for me, this, this, allows me to kind of just stay really safe uh, in that space. And so as I start adding subdivisions, again, I can go in here and refine. Now, at this particular stage, um, you can see, you know, my points start to start to tick up. I start to have a little bit more information. You know, maybe maybe at this point I'm enlisting something like a Damien standard and just kind of tightening up some suggestions in here, you know. But again, not doing any, any heavy lifting. Uh, I can start exploring things in terms of uh, – you know, how planar I want to go with things or how soft, but um, really controlling the degrees of that tightness. You know, that's really important for me at, at this stage. Um, and then, of course, as I get, you know, a little bit more polished with uh, with more subdivisions, um, I'll spend a lot of time at this stage uh, just to make sure that my choices feel well enough. And probably the next question that is, is – uh, commonly thrown you know uh is well when do you know when to kind of commit and i think that's a uh, unique to every artist and i think in in viz dev what makes this different from let's say what i would approach on a more like production modeling level is production modeling you know typically you're going to have a a pretty firm target you know I, i'd say it's pretty firm where it's like okay just there you go man run for it that that's your that's your lane um jacob was such a moving target on this show and it was the first human we were trying to understand. Um, so I try to have a process that keeps me flexible and, uh, uh, you know, not be too precious about anything, not, uh, not be afraid to, you know, totally pivot, you know, at the drop of a dime if you need to. Um, so the next step really after this is to kind of go into something that now I'm utilizing, you know, other aspects of ZBrush that um, take me away from just the move brush, you know, at literally all the previous steps, it's more or less move brush, a little bit of Damien standard, maybe some H polish thrown in there, um, but not even playing with any clay brush or, or anything uh, like that at this point. But here, you know, I usually, if I've done my, my job well on the previous steps, I can start considering uh, Dynameshing pieces together here. So for example, if I go in here, you know, I still have my independent poly groups. I would go in here and basically say, okay, you know, maybe I'm safe to take these right here and go ahead and, and Dynamesh this. And, and the way I usually go about this is I kind of try to be a little bit strategic where I'll Dynamesh with uh, poly groups on so that I can kind of control what pieces are getting welded in. So, you know, if I just kind of execute this here, you know, now you can see that I've now welded that together. And if, if I spend a lot of time, you know, really, really, uh, you know, creating these shapes and forms in a way that hold the forms I want, um, much of what I'm doing at this stage is simply just smoothing out <laughs> those little imperfections within uh, the pieces that are intersecting. So a lot of what I'm looking at is literally these lines right here, just understanding what those intersections are doing. And then I would continue this process. So like if I go a little bit further here, maybe the next step here is to take all of this. Again, I'm going to make my poly group. I'm going to go ahead and just dynamesh this together. Again, keeping it really strategic. If things start to break down, this is where I, you know, have no choice. I'm going to go ahead and just up this. But again, even when I'm up into resolution, I'm trying to be very controlled with it. I don't want to go too crazy too quickly. Um, even here, this is definitely too much. I would bring this down. Let's see to somewhere right about here. Probably is going to be a sweet spot. And that gives me just enough fidelity to start working with some sculpting at this stage. It's not only, you know, smoothing out little imperfections, but it's maybe tightening up some suggestions. I'll go in and use Damien Standard here. Um, you can see that I can just really quickly just kind of, you know, refine certain areas to a, to the degree that I need. 
maybe here I start considering where some other details are going to basically get introduced and then slowly start really compiling all this stuff together. Um, another thing I've been using more of lately is uh, clay polish, which, man, why didn't no one ever tell me about this magical button <laughs> that, uh -huh. that tightens up your geometry? I, I wish I would have known about this, but uh, uh, much sooner. But I go in here, I you know, if I just hit that, it'll oftentimes just tighten up certain areas and I don't want to lose softness, so I try to be careful with it. You know, maybe I would just like mask off a, a specific area that I want to clay polish, which is uh, something that masking really gives you so much control over. You can you can be very precise with where you want to isolate those things. Um, so at this step, the next logical thing is is more context. This is where I'll typically block in uh, some forms. And, you know, for things like brows, uh, lashes, uh, maybe even representation of hair, uh, you know, so this allows me to have more context to evaluate things. And even more so, I can start getting into to color. So as we move forward here, and I'm just going to turn on a little bit of this stuff here. This is where I'll get into something that now I've taken all of those polygroups that, that existed. And I know this is kind of... Uh, Mind you, it's skipping a few steps here, you know, just to get to something that has just a little more clarity. But uh, it really is uh, a method of just going from this, dynameshing things together, introducing the little bits of complexity you want. And then, you know, slowly I'll start working in a little bit of poly paint. Um, I don't think it should be understated how valuable color is, uh, uh, you know, as a tool to really see proper representation when you're using your eye to evaluate distance between different landmarks. Oh, no, uh, you're hitting something that has been presented here before. Ian and myself have been oh, yeah. watching from afar, and, uh, and it is definitely something that uh, has been mentioned before across the side. Yeah, the colors yeah abs abs colors. absolutely. So, so I would... In terms of the design, so... Absolutely. I, I would always advocate, you know, introduce color as soon as you can in, in your process. Uh, it's, it's only going to enhance your ability to to make educated guesses on, on where you want to go. Let's Especially agreeing with you emphatically, agreeing with you and smiling. <laughs> uh, yes. hey, man. Smiling and saying, what do you think? You agree with him 100 percent? Yeah, I mean, especially for stylized stuff, like sometimes the color says so much because we're working with primary, secondary shapes only. We don't have like the extra tertiary, tertiary stuff yet. Right. So I think like color helps a lot with that. Yeah. Okay, carry on. Sorry, didn't mean to interject, but I no, really want hey, to make no, sure. No, no, no sweat. I'm, I'm, hammer I'm that one right into the board. Yeah, yeah. No, I'm, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. Ian's um, smiling at me. Here no, we no. It's, it's, keep well, going, keep also, going. too, just to interject real fast, it's also really cool to see the process because, you know, uh, like you touched on something earlier, Charles, about when you should actually be trying to commit to something. Um, it seems that even though, you know, this is a process you've worked out quite a while, um, keeping those poly groups and then dynameshing with groups on does definitely help you kind of safeguard so you're not welding too much too quickly. And I really dig yeah. that approach. And so I just wanted to touch back on that and say that I, I really advocate for that as well. I think it's a solid approach. So to hear you say that is just solidifying the process <laughs> that I've used. Oh, myself. man. No, th thank <laughs> you. Or thumbs that, up. That, <laughs> I'll take it. I'll take what I can get. Um, it, the little victories, man. That's like, <laughs> yeah. um, so, uh, so, you know, again, just... <laughs> In the, in the spirit of, of context, I'll start, you know, uh, coloring as much as I can. Then this is where it's it becomes a really interesting uh, uh, point, you know, for, for me. Because if I know that I'm in the ballpark, let's say, you know, Leticia or myself are working on something where we, we you, you almost sense it. You know, you know you're close. Um, it's That's where you got to make a kind of a technical choice as to... Uh, how you want to proceed because the likelihood of having to make multiple poses or expression tests, things like that, things that you saw uh, demonstrated from some of the other artists, Caleb, Caleb included yesterday. Um, that, that for me is where I typically just go all in on giving myself something that has as much flexibility, uh, flexibility as possible. Um, now Z remesher will typically give me something uh, in a pinch relatively quick. Uh, but I, if I'm being perfectly honest, you know, what I typically do is I'll just take this raw mesh. Uh, if it's really heavy, uh, I'll decimate it uh, and, and take something into Maya where I can, you know, typically just uh, use a tool like Quad Draw and, and retopple the head relatively quick. Not, not for production's sake, but just with the intent of having something that I know is going to supply me with the fidelity I need for, for different exploration. Um, 
And and also uh, notice that I've only been blocking in the head here. Uh, the, there is a reason for that. Uh, a lot of times when you want to work quick and nimble uh, in this kind of space, um, you know, if you have a base mesh to supply you with a good head start to be something you can push and pull and, and work on top of, uh, that clearly is a, is a way to expedite what you need. Um, but pretty much always exclusively, I, I don't resort to base mesh on the heads because I don't want to fall mercy to uh, any – technical limitations with what the topology is dictating. So for me, it's important to stay very uh, uh, organic at this at this stage, like keep it flexible, right? So um, so after I've done a little bit of that, let's let's fast forward a little bit. Let's say I took this to Maya, did my retopo pass. And, and uh, what I typically do is weld it into uh, whatever body I've already kind of sorted out at that stage. I bring it over here. And here you can see that this is basically quite literally what I used on Jacob in terms of uh, just the topology I drafted for him. Um, could I have done this with Zero Mesher? Absolutely. Absolutely, you could have. But it's, it's, again, it's uh, you decide where you want to kind of emphasize your commitment to in terms of like that technical prep. Sometimes we treat it way looser and um, other times we have to be a little bit more stringent on it. But at this point, you know, I can go in and then, you know, I probably have some added context um, where I would just sculpt in just kind of a blob of a shape for hair just to represent some uh, some suggestions. Now, um, mind you, this is an example on what ended up being, you know, more or less my final pass of Jacob. But uh, uh, this is not uh, representing all the other <laughs> iterations that, you know, I know Leticia and I are very familiar with. Um, here's some final shaping on his body and you can see just how we you know kind of go about introducing some clarity on the forms i'm still relying on high subdivision levels to kind of go in and sculpt on top of um the poly groups that you see established here are quite literally just from uh uvs and it's it's really nice to be able to create poly groups from uvs uh, uh, but you know uh, we have so much to share so i don't want to take up too much of this but when all's well and good and, and we have a scenario where we, you know, have the, the the kind of look we want, you know, we're also considering clothing, how we bring in clothing into the mix. And then that eventually gets us to a place where, um, you know, all the context comes together and, and we'll we'll run through some iterations and, and how what that looks like, too. But um, I just wanted to kind of showcase that and really place an emphasis on the importance of, great. man, just start simple, always start simple. Um, anytime you start to... Uh, overcomplicated. I always find that that's when things kind of lose control a little bit. So. Looks fantastic. Are you kidding me? Is there any chance we see that in action in a little clip action, perhaps? Oh, <laughs> man. I, you know what? I, I don't have any clips. <laughs> oh, no. I have Netflix open here. I can share there my we go. screen. Oh, here see? we go. A refeed of the Netflix. There we go. Yeah. There we go. Leticia is always prepared. Uh, that's no, I'm not. I open Netflix like just now. Uh, we're watching Netflix while screen. we're talking about it. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, will you watch okay. some Netflix? Um, I can show some of the uh, yeah, this is like the amazing work that uh, Charles did. And that's him. Uh, I did this one. I'll show a little bit later, but uh, let me find him doing some very action-y actions. Here we go. Oh, actually, yeah, when it's yeah, paused, we're, we're not really seeing the overlay. I've not really seen can, it. Have you seen a little pre- able to... Oh, that's right, because Netflix doesn't look... Oh, Netflix might be blocking it. Quack, quack, quack. Uh, might be blocking it. All right, quack, quack. never mind. Oh, oh there's Just imagine in your mind. <laughs> yeah, we we did have a question, uh, Leticia, before you uh, continue and go on, because I know you guys have a lot to share. But we, uh, we had a couple questions. Um, when the because you kind of skipped ahead on the head a little bit, uh, were were you using poly paint for the eyebrows, or did you uh, have extra geo you brought in? Extra geo, I actually used a topology brush uh, right on top. So you know, uh, when I am over at this stage, I, I guess probably this one right here when i'm here you know this is just dynamesh there's no subdivisions i'll just take uh uh you know my topology brush right here and you know quite literally just just draw whatever i need right so if i yeah. if i want brows i'll just kind of you know make my shape and then i'll just kind of close it off so this this allows me to keep it really simple um and you know then once i execute that as long as it's the right type of thing i I just kind of turn on dynamic on that on that form, and it uh, holds the shape really easy. It's easy to maintain and manage. Um, but uh, 
but later on these sculpts right here that or this one that you saw um i kind of z remeshed that uh that model at some point subdivided and you know did a little bit of sculpting a little bit of poly paint so just to give it uh a little bit more fidelity and stuff nice it looks fantastic you say that again ian yeah thank you no, I mean, you could say that again. Hey, yeah, it looks okay. fantastic. I will do it. I will say it all day long. It looks amazing. Seriously. It's a, same with the clothing, which we did have a clothing question, but if you're going to be covering cloth at some point, too, I'll let you go ahead and continue on because you guys have a lot to share, and it's already yeah, fantastic. I, I, I'd love to pass it over to Leticia because she has some amazing stuff to share with Blue as well. So, the, Leticia, man, go for Perfect. it. Yeah. Um, thank you, Charlie. That was great. Um very much like what Charles said, like, you know, I'll get a concept, something like this. And then uh, just so you guys can see here, this was my first pass on it, you know. And again, like you put colors, you do whatever you need to get the feeling of the character. The thing I love about colors is that it's easier for you to keep looking for that feeling of the character instead of just seeing everything on gray shade or whatever. So uh, and then you can see here that there was a few pieces added. But if I jump into ZBrush, um, you can see this is blue, right? Mm. And and this is the blockout I found, my, my first blockout, which was this one. And basically, just like what Charles said, like, I really just focusing, like, I love this window here uh, that ZBrush has now where if you click, just click and drag, you can make it bigger if you want to focus on some things. But you can really see what's going on with a very basic, simple silhouette. A lot of cartoon stuff, it's all about how shapes connect and, and how sharp to soft transitions, right? We have a sharp transition here. Obviously, this is the block out. But when I show the final model, you know, since he's a blob, you're not going to find a lot of hard shapes, right? So you got to, one thing I like to say is about soft uh, versus hard, which is, get the feeling of who the character is and imagine the contrast is a very important word contrast it's a very important word of like how do i play with soft and hard on this character to uh, give the feeling of the character so this one is obviously a very soft character so if i would say contrast i'm gonna have much more towards soft and a little less towards uh, hard shapes and if i go here to um the final model, you show it, um, you can see that like that sh that hard edge I was having from my block out, right? It was like a hard place. No, no. Y again, you got to really feel who the character is. And in this case, he's supposed to be very non-threatening. You're go not going to find very much sharp edges on it, which doesn't mean you cannot have sharp edges. Again, like it's a game of like he's 70% soft, 30% uh, sharp. So you can see that since he's so simple, like very simple blob, what could I do to bring more life to it? You know, so I start adding these folds, very sharp folds going on. You can see here on the arms and all of that. Again, I am always like to say the word contrast, you know, like try to find ways to bring contrast. Don't just make, oh, he's a blob. I'm going to make everything soft. That doesn't bring contrast, doesn't bring a uh, visual interest, you know? So you can see on some things, there's like, even though this is a soft shape, there are sharp angles going on here in the transition of shapes, which again, bring that idea of like 70, 30 or 80, 20 kind of thing. One thing that you gotta be careful though is when you get 50, 50, when you get 50, 50, again, 50, 50 is not contrast, right? It's equal amounts. And when you do that on your decisions, it might, bring you to the uncanny valley kind of feeling. So again, remember the word contrast, remember the 730 or 8020, because that's going to make uh, your designs more appealing, at least in my, my experience so far. So with blue, again, you can see here, this is kind of like the block out that I started from. I like to start just like Charles. If you look at here, these are all um, very low res dynamesh stuff. Some of it I zero mesh, but again, it's just very basic to really get those shapes in. And then um, 
the 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 way I normally like to start is just again only thinking about primary shapes. I'm only thinking about what's going on with my silhouette in every angle. And I had a teacher. His name's um, Mike DeFeo. And we're working 3D, so you gotta rotate. I see sometimes people just like focusing front view, side view, front view, side view. You gotta rotate. You gotta look from underneath. You gotta look from the top. Everything needs to be in a certain rhythm, the certain certain flow going on, right? So I have here. Uh, this is the the simple block out I did. So I normally after I do this, I dynamesh and just start sculpting. I like to call it sculpting with intention which again is not necessarily, I go over, um, like if I go to this shape and I'm like, oh, okay, I'm gonna carve his mouth and then I'm gonna start doing this on the eyes. That's not sculpting with intention, right? So I like to go slow, almost like you're patting your cat, you know, kind of things like, oh, let me see how it's gonna feel here. And, you know, like giving a lot of love to the shapes. And again, at all the time, if you sculpt with intention and love, you're gonna feel like you have some level of control. You don't lose control of your mass, basically, you know? So I have this here, I'm just gonna show a few things. So this is like the version of blue with open mouth so we could figure it out. What, what the hell is going on inside his mouth here? You know, what, what kind of gum, what kind of teeth? So it's very, very soft and cutie like this. Um, the way I did my iterations, again, just like Char Charles said, like I get to a point where the design is good and I feel like I'm pretty much there. And then I start going to poses and, and like testing out different things. Like when he's swimming, <laughs> what's going on here? That's awesome. And then we have him just being cute, kind of like sitting there, cute. Um, like here I have the first iteration that I did. So I did this version and then... Um, we start feeling like, oh, he's feeling a bit, a bit uh, bare bones and, you know, but again, you can see that a lot of his features, it's, it's very soft, right? Very little sharps going on. So again, that's why I made so intense those folds to kind of, again, bring that visual contrast that, uh, to the model. Um, one thing also that I did just like Charles is like, uh, I dynamesh this and then I got to a point where I was like, okay, this is very good. So I just did a quick um, um, quad draw in Maya. And then uh, if I go low res here, you could kind of see, you know, that's not animation topology. It's just for me to have some poly groups, some flow of, if at any point I'm like, okay, I want to pose this, right? Because I have this flow of topology, I, I can just like mask by uh, by topology, or I can even just like hide the parts that I want. And uh, let's say mask this one. And then I can just um, bring it here, turn off my symmetry, smooth my mask. I love having also the, the low res, right? So I can just go here and just like rotate him and do whatever kind of pose I need. So I could do something like this, you know? So I love having the low rest so I can go back to it and, and do posing or test um, animations, anything that is needed. Um, wow. Yeah, so in this <clears throat> model, it's a very simple model as you can see, but that's kind of how the process I went through. Uh, I really like to paint things as much as I can here. Obviously, he in the movie, he doesn't have much going on. If I show my PRF here, um, you can see that's him in the movie. So he was just like, you know, a blob. He's super cute, so, though. I have to say, I'm going to interject real quick and just say how adorable <laughs> he is. And those poses and the and just, just to see it come to life a little bit, you know, because it's like... It's just so adorable. And, it is and, cute. Yeah, and the way you're pushing, like you said, that contrast element, the, the chat's going nuts as like, that's that's such a well way, uh, well put uh, term yeah. to use. It's excellent. And you can use contrast with everything, right? Like, especially on stylized, like you can think about sharp, uh, straight versus curves, right? So this is something that it's is really nice. very nice to play with, yeah. right? When, when you're thinking about it, like you can see that, there's no angles here, but everything kind of sort of feels like it flows and connects in the way, you know, yeah. it's a very flowy model where if I open another model, which is um, Sarah, 
she is way more angular, you know. So on her case, it was 70% angular and then 30% soft, which on blue was kind of like 80, 90% soft and then 10% an angular, you know. Yeah. So if we look at Sarah here, um, you can see that uh, if I isolate Ama just Amazing model, by the way. Sarah, Sarah's yeah. amazing. Oh, cool thank you. You know what I mean? It was like, <laughs> uh, it was like a female version of Keith Richards popped onto the screen. It's like, you're, you're like a rolling stone, you know? Yeah. Not amused and not yeah, happy. Here's just, a knife, by the way, kid. Just one thing to interject real quick on. Go on ahead, Charles. Yeah. Just what Leticia just showed. Um, I got to say, like, s simple characters are the hardest, for, in my yeah. personal opinion. There's, there's nowhere to hide. You know, every line has is very intentional um so seeing what leticia did to bring that to life is yeah. is uh really fantastic I, I i have to say i learned that the hard way because one of my <laughs> favorite shows is gravity falls and i was like when i was early on i was like okay yeah i'm gonna i'm gonna sculpt on those characters they're easy right <laughs> that was that nope. was a lesson taught <laughs> when i when i was teaching at noman i used to on my first day i would open zbrush and i would say to and I was very late in the program. Like my class is one of the last ones in the program. So I'll get people very good in ZBrush already. But what I would do is I would get those very 2D Cartoon Network characters. And I would say, all right, let me see how you guys are doing. And then I'll give them the concept. And I'll say, go, sculpt this shit. And uh, everyone would be struggling because they're so used to be doing things with anatomy and, and, and a, lot, a lot of shapes changes, right? And that was my way to bring everyone to kind of like a humble level. It's like, all right, now we all know that we have more to learn. Let's go for it. You know what I mean? Yeah, that is awesome. Great approach. I like that. That's great. There you go. Yeah, sculpt, sculpt this triangle shape thing that's not really a triangle. Yeah. Go for it. I, I, I got to say, uh, coming back to this again, I mean, when I see these pirates on a ship, I see this one character pop up. I said, this has got to be, they got to, have you, did you look at Keith Richards? Give me that at least. <laughs> Come on. Oh, God. Arr. Yeah, so if I go here to Sarah, um, you guys can see that, you know, she, she's, she's nice, like, uh, she has this very angular shapes, right? We have, obviously, much more anatomy. She has this very angular shapes. But again, she's not, she is complex character. She's not just angles, you know. So if you notice, we have the angles, but they're not completely sharp, like very hard sharp. They have some curvature going on. If you look from far, they feel very much like angles. But when you get closer to her, you start feeling the curves instead of just like boop, boop, straight lines, you know. That's what I love about Sarah because she is a character that is very badass and strong, etc. But in, in when you go seeing the movie, you start getting close to her. You start seeing her softness, you know, her soft side and... And that was what I was trying to um, put it in here. You can see also the, um, I did a, a, like Charles did, I did a little um, topology on it. And uh, I love topology mainly to kind of like, you know, be able to like mask certain parts of the model when I need to pose it and also go to the lowest resolution and be able to, to change anything. Um, one thing I like to do since I was using ZBrush to present my models a lot, you can see that, I don't know if you guys can see, but there is a certain level of noise in the model, like just to break the highlights. And I'm gonna zoom in a bit more just so you all can see, it's like it's not a smooth model, right? So when the highlight hits, you don't have that very plasticky soft highlight, you kind of have a little more complexity. And the way I go about doing that is using um, surface noise. So um, I don't know, even for cartoon stuff like this, um, I like to put it even for a little bit, again, because I don't want that very harsh highlight, you know? I want a bit of complexity on the highlight. So what I like to do is I go to noise, on the surface noise, and then I'm gonna say edit. And in this case, because I already have it, um, the noise in it, um, let me try to zoom in. <laughs> Um, I can just edit now, but if I didn't have it, this is the basic noise in ZBrush that, that plugs in by default. <laughs> so <clears throat> if I want to, like, for example, make my noise stronger, just so you all can see, you can kind of see what's going on with the noise there, you see. Now it's very strong. It's breaking the highlight a lot. It's like a much rougher surface. 
where but in this case for cartoons i don't want too much aggressiveness on the my noise so i like to put just a smidge kind of like break that highlight and give some life to the model you know so you can see i made it a bit stronger you can see what's going on with the noise here and that i love doing that for many things and and one of the things i did this as well let me just tone it down a little because it was too much it's too much okay one thing I used this as well as was on her hair. As you can see, you know, it's just tubes. If I go lower resolution here. Um, it's just tubes that I made, but then I added surface noise to it to, again, like it's not like the very soft highlight going on. It has some complexity on the on the locks, you know. Um, so that is something I do a lot. Um, a what else can I show on her? Oh, do you guys have any questions? No, I have. I, I want to be her when I grow up. <laughs> yes, she, uh, me too. I mean, yeah, I'm trying my best, but my hair, you know. When I, when I, I just want to. I just kind of actually want to call back to the surface noise bit because I take think, it away. I think that right there, uh, the whole chat was like, "Wow, awesome!" Learned a lot just on that alone because you, you know, you, you're using it in a way that's still keeping the stylization of the character alive and well, because it does have a cartoony feel, but then when you get in, it feels more lifelike yeah. with all those textures yeah. and yeah. getting those pores coming through. So, yeah. just... And even on cloth, I like to to use some on it, you know? Again, like the highlight, okay, sculpture is perceived by light. Any 3D sculpture, you perceive shape by light, right? right? So if your objects are all soft with the same highlight, that's fine, it's a look. But in this case for our movie, we wanted a more dirty kind of like wear it up look. So what I did is I just put a bunch of surface noise on things to kind of, again, break that and create that visual complexity. It's almost like that tertiary detail that I don't want to sculpt because it's it's not going to stay on the model. It's just for presentation, you know? Yeah, of course. So, I remember when we were developing that, I thought, oh, this is going to change a lot of workflows. And I'm yeah. really proud to see this today. Like I, I can remember it being... <laughs> Such a yeah. monumental thing at the time when it was just not released. And I think I used so on was... everything. You can see here on her, pe her peg leg, like, uh, you see, like, this model here, this shape, you can see that if I go low res, this this is, you know, this is a topology. It's a, I'm just yeah. so happy to see people using it that way. It's so great. It's so great to see. But you can see the noise going around and, like, again, creating yeah. that perception of a bit more complexity than actually is in the model. Yeah. No, that's great. We have, we do have a couple questions for Take sure. Um, so uh, the first one is how how do your models get approved? Do you put them in uh, A pose, T pose? Do you do a test pose to show them off? What's the best approach that you do for approval? That's a great thing. Um, I'm going to show very quick my pose, but Charles has a bunch of cool stuff for facial expressions and things like that. So I'm going to throw the ball back to him. <laughs> um, so for this character here, you see like. Um, I just gave a little bit of like straight kind of feeling pose on her. I did um, a few, um, let me zoom in. So I did a few facial expressions. So this is kind of her like, you know, hey. But then I did a little more like she's angry, like what the hell, you know? <laughs> and then she's like, hmm, yeah. <laughs> so, and a little smirk because she's very, you know, contained. So I couldn't go too crazy on her with the expressions. It needed to be something a bit more elegant and, and strong for her. So you can see that I didn't go crazy with the expressions because it's not who she is, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, but I'm going to throw the ball back to Charles because I, um, I know he has some cool stuff to show. And then I can show Macy after. <laughs> go ahead, Charlie. Okay, no, it's all good. I mean, just fantastic stuff, right, guys? Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's crazy. The, um, phenomenal, and, uh, guys. Before you go any further, just phenomenal. Everyone yeah, is smashing the like button and subscribe or whatever they do. <laughs> <laughs> it's you, all it's you. all off the chain. Smash like, Smash subscribe, like. share, follow, comment, <laughs> do it all. Sorry. Carry on, carry on. We're out of we control. We were trying to like, um, uh, like, yeah, we were. Leticia and I were trying to figure out like how how do we break down like what what it feel like what's the lineage of, of the journey of these characters and so like to get to get to that presentational component that uh, uh one of the questions was right now there is a a whole factor of iterations and communication and uh exploration right and um so i'm i'm gonna kind of just go through uh, a little bit of that process here i'm gonna scrub through just 
a few of the passes that uh, we'll typically do, you know, for these characters. So like, you know, as far as to answer the, how do you show it for approval? I, I, I would say that the best scenarios always show something that conveys personality, whether it's uh, one pose or a series of expressions or just one expression, whatever it is. Um, I never show anything in a, in a T pose or a pose, anything like that. The, about as, as default as I'll get is arms down. And th this is something that for me, arms down is really relevant because, you know, our characters on screen are going to have their arms down. They're never going to be walking around like this. Uh, so that's <laughs> really easy way to kind of convey, you know, so, and, and also I don't have to think too much about uh, Riggin in a sense. So uh, one thing, as... just one thing, Trev, uh, one thing important, I feel like in all animation studios that I worked, um, you never present T post to directors, you know, yeah. especially for main characters, you are always going to have to add some light to your character to be able sure. to get stuff approved. So yeah, but go ahead, Trev. No, no, no. I mean, that's absolutely the case. I mean, the, the same was true at DreamWorks. Um, say same is true for anything I develop now, uh, you know, at Spire. Um, and so as we kind of go through iterations, I, I wanted to show something here. Um, this is, this is what it looks like. <laughs> uh, this is a funny image that I wanted to pull up. Uh, this is, uh, me and Tony kind of working together and figuring stuff out, you know, just literally just throwing a bunch of stuff on the wall and, and trying things. And, I would take a stab at expressions. He would go in and, you know, he just has this magical quality with lines that he can just kind of identify what he thinks might be a better suggestion or a way for us to, you know, kind of, kind of lean towards the scribbles of notes. I, uh, I wanted to show this cause this is often what it looks like. And you're in the, the thick of it. There's deadlines. There's, uh, so much to be done, uh, that, it really just is kind of everyone collaborating and, and finding things. And um, so in the spirit of expressions, you know, I, I, I will spend a lot of time um, just playing at in this space to try to convey as much personality as I can. Sometimes it's a failure. Uh, sometimes it's pushes things forward, but that in itself, those, those failures, I think are really valuable, you know, to understand like, okay, that didn't quite work. Let's go this way. Um, uh, some of the added components you're seeing here are things like groom. I, I know that's not specific to, uh, what I may use ZBrush for, but, uh, to me, any kind of fidelity, uh, is important to convey to characters. And, you know, this is something Leticia and I really feel passionate about. Like any, anytime you can give, uh, a bit of richness like that tip with noise is fantastic that's something i don't do and you better believe i will start doing that yeah. uh, but but it's it's that kind of stuff that i think is uh really valuable uh you know so for me here again just uh, experimenting with not only expressions but how to groom uh reacts you know in in that regard and we'll get into crazy crazy stuff you know again like we were talking about that question about presentations and poses. This is an exercise that Tony and I did and we were like, okay, let's, let's try to see how everything holds up. And this might've been over the top, but we were feeling ambitious and wanted to go for as much as we could. So we went through and tried to flush out as, you know, phonemes and, you know, okay, what is a stretch for Jacob? What's a squash? Um, you know, really trying to hone in on what those specific shapes were. Um, and all of this was meant to be informative for, uh, as part of like a model packet that we can deliver to, uh, the amazing team at Sony. You know, we haven't even mentioned that so Sony image That's was, right. <laughs> is who brought this to life. Um, we're, we're serving so early downstream that, uh, we're not executing anything that's finished on, on the, you know, final pixel. Um, and they really just, uh, brought all this, you know, together in such a great way. There's even refinements down to, you know, okay, maybe different looks on hair silhouettes, uh, different suggestions on costuming. Um, and then we get into nitty gritty. Uh, at this stage, um, Shi Yoon came in uh, and, you know, Shi Yoon Kim, uh, amazing. He's amazing. You know, just that simple. Um, and he would, can go with just a fine line on, on a drawover and just indicate what he wants to see. You know, Leticia's job, my job is to 
make sure we're holding on to that properly. You know, one of the things I, I like to think about with when I look at silhouettes and stuff is like the, I often refer to it as the weight of the curve. And what I, re, what I mean by that is never trying to make anything feel too weighted centered, you know, where it's just too normalized. You know, if, if you're going to have a, a pushed curve, let the weight be high, let it be low, ne- never in the middle, unless it really calls for it. Um, and then, you know, as, as we kind of push forward, um, then we have someone like Wu Wu Young is, uh, what the, the art director on Seabees, but just an incredibly talented painter, you know? And so he can come in and take a render that we'll provide and, and really do like an exceptional job at indicating the kind of, you know, weathering and, and things that he wants to see. And then that brings in the other aspect of why Leticia and I were trying to convey things in ZBrush with poly paint um, that give a certain dexterity of, you know, weathering and, and all this stuff. And uh, Michelle Clapton had joined the show. Uh, and if you're not familiar with the name, she's responsible for all the costume designs behind Game of Thrones. So, I mean, she, she really came in with such a, a uh, grandiose understanding of of all of this the nature of these kinds of garments and um what you're seeing here are her drawings in the sense of like okay try let's try this you know for uh for costumes and you know you can see some of the stuff for jacob and crow and then so we'll go and we'll try that stuff you know here you can see that i am fooling around with different ideas in regards to you know these these uh these outfits and at all the while trying to hold on to as simple a a silhouette as we can and when i i'm going to jump back to zbrush for a moment here just to kind of uh in the same spirit of of what uh, was asked of leticia with the posing and stuff like this is something for sure that we uh get into you know once i have a a working default model right like some i i refer to this as just the default arms down um posable topology things things of that nature then uh we do want to spin off what would be like kind of our our hero poses um and so you know what i typically do at this stage is i'll just copy and paste the tool and i've tried this two different ways and i've failed and succeeded in different ways with this um but i used to uh just stay within one tool and duplicate a lot of geometry, make folders and all that stuff. And it, it works, it serves its purpose, but it, when I wanted to see like the transition between a uh, default and a pose, it, I had to go in and, you know, deal with turning off visibility, turning on other things. So uh, copying the tool just, you know, ultimately was the most sensible approach. And I'll take all the existing stuff and I'll just start going in and identifying uh, these poses and and the way we arrive at these poses would be uh, literally Tony and I just standing in the hallway um, and kind of acting it out. <laughs> um, and it's it's a comedic thing to see these two you know grown ups trying to like imply how they want to see these characters conveyed. But we also benefited from this unique scenario at Netflix where we we kind of sat right amongst the story department. And you can see how they were boarding the characters and you can see kind of key moments that that made sense to maybe try to convey or, you know, what kind of personality to convey. So here I can go in, you know, with Jacob and, you know, you can see like the stool is just cubes. I just kind of blocked out (laughs) uh, to make something. But it's and then I put like a real simple platform just to make sure he's planted. And my my objective with any pose is to understand the weight understand a through line like what what's a what's a strong line of action we can get through here and i very much utilize um silhouette at this point where Mm -hmm. i can just kind of go through and just see how things feel from a few angles and you'll see that you know even here i'm like really trying to just convey this one curve here as as just a simple c i just i just wanted this all to just kind of go through in a very simple way and it's a it's finding these opportunities to do that kind of stuff that uh, is, is really fantastic. You know, I really enjoy the posing probably more so than any other part of the process because you see the character come to life. We'll spin off other examples. Mm-hmm. Um, here's a version that was relevant um, because 
you know, if you've seen Sea Beast, uh, Macy, which is the hero character Leticia did so beautifully, and and Jacob really they developed their relationship over the course of that movie, and uh, Tony thought it would be great to just show Jacob maybe down at her level. She's a kid. And how would he look at her with admiration? And and that's really what I was trying to convey here. Like, just take take what I had of him and find that softness on an otherwise very brute of a man type of, you know, uh, figure. And and this really informs us as far as, like, the range we can get with, with the characters and, um, and also hopefully inspire downstream to really try to find and push – you know, the character that he can be. Um, we'll do some some other things here that are, you know, uh, this one wasn't my favorite pose, uh, but at the very least, it's conveying a different side of him, you know, something a little bit more light. Mm-hmm. Um, how do we arrive at the poses? Uh, so I use T-Pose Mesh uh, pretty exclusively for posing. And uh, for me, it's uh, a really valuable tool because I can uh, rely on, you know, good topology that I have. So for example, you know, all of these garments here, you know, everything was pretty much built. Uh, oops, let me see what's happening here. Let me select this one. Well, we do have another question coming in. Before we get too far ahead with the posing, you were talking about a lot of expression testing and a lot of uh, trying to find the character. And as we all know, at some point in time, actors come on and, and help bring the character to life finally. Do you ever get a chance to work with any actors during the early phases if they know they're coming on to get the expressions maybe a little bit closer to what they would bring to the character? Or is this something you explore on your own first and then let the actor kind of come in and, and finalize? A great that, that would be really cool. But I, I would say, at least in my experience, that's that's usually reserved for like the the animators that are bringing the character to life, they might have more of a dialogue with the, uh, with the voice talent and stuff like that is and obviously the director, you know, and, and that stuff. But um, sometimes if we know the casting of the character, we might hunt down reference, you know, uh, and, and let that kind of uh, impact some inspire. of our choices right. and inspire. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, so, so if we have that knowledge at that time, um, it's definitely um, useful, but but uh, as much as I wish I could say I, I chatted with Justin Timberlake on you know trolls, I <laughs> I didn't get that chance. Um, yeah, no, that's but- fair. That's that's totally fair. Um, and then and then uh, the 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 last question I have for you too is everybody's so interested in the cloth expression. Did you do the cloth and Z brushes and then just kind of like you did with the character work it out, or was there another direction? So- so th- there's a typically a different uh, approach, at least that I kind of uh, go on with this. Um, uh, th- this is where I wish I had a little bit more know-how in ZBrush. You know, I've seen people do some amazing stuff with Z Modeler in terms of creating and drafting. You know, um, you know, good cages for things. I mean, if it's a skin-tight garment, uh, I'm, t- you know. Uh, can mask off, you know, a component from the skin, extract that, like remesh it, like I can do stuff. But um, knowing that we needed to, I I needed to remain fairly controlled with what I was doing. And um, so I always resort to the tools I'm familiar with. What what I did for this stuff is just block out very simple cages um, in, in Maya, bring that stuff in. But then from that moment on, I'm relying on ZBrush to kind of do all the heavy lifting at that point right. in the sense of now I, you know, again, I'm not at the mercy of needing to create a production garment that is going to be simulated. I can go in and really uh, play with uh, the kind of expression I want the fabric to have. In this case, um, you know, we had a lot of, you know, interesting fidelity we were trying to introduce. Um, and the coloration was probably the the biggest component of, you know, just having this kind of weathered feel um, my poly painting technique, kind of simple. Um, you know, I literally would just use standard brush and I would typically just utilize an alpha. I had a library of just different alphas that were kind of interesting, just offered certain breakup. Um, and then my, my brush mode, my stroke mode, I would just, you know, switch it to drag select and I could then go on and then with, with just varied hues of coloration, just add, just imply, you know, just some some breakup of, of color. That's how I got a lot of like this kind of weathered feel through here. Um, and it was trial and error. Uh, I think a lot of that stuff, uh, 
you you had to just kind of try something if it was giving you what you needed then you kind of stuck with that and at one point i found a good formula and just kind of kept on going with it but um wow it's a that's... home it's a home run if i may say i think um unanimously people love it uh, especially my kid she loves it oh yeah, yeah. Just a <laughs> grand slam wow. and, and and the way that you've handled all this is just uh Exquisite is the only. Oh, th thing thank you, mind. man. Thank you. I appreciate it. Uh, yeah. I I want to. Uh, I'm going to punt the ball back to Leticia. We're just going to kind of go back and forth. If if yeah, if you why the heck show, not? By all uh, means, anything like that. <laughs> okay. Um, I have here. I think uh, it's going to share. Um, I have here sort of like the. Um, if you don't mind sharing my screen. Yep. Okay, so you can see here this sort of like for presentation what I was doing, which is. Um, again, what Charles said, like, even if you don't have time to do anything, put the arms down, it's going to feel more natural, you know, like, uh, you can see on this one, this is a T pose, I just put the arms out, and it already feels a little better than having an A pose, a T pose character. So here you can see a little bit of the, the posing, and then some of the facial expressions that I did for her, and this is her at the end in the movie. Wow. Um I can show here also what what I was talking about earlier. You can see that like this is Gwen the witch. So you can see that the witch she is she has sharp angles, like really increased sharps. And then you can see Sarah is sort of like more of this with a little bit more nuances nuances on the soft. And then you can see Macy, which is way more soft. But don't get me wrong. Macy, just like Blue, has some good sharps that are very keen. Like if we notice here, she she has this sharp angle here. She has this sharp V on the nose. She has this very sharp mouth shape, and and this ages her. We in the movie Macy, she is an orphan, so that line on her eyes is just a very simple line, but that line gave her that that wisdom that some kids need to have if the, you don't grow up with your parents or something, you know? Yeah. So all of those decisions needs to be done with a, a lot of love. Um, I can show here in ZBrush, like Macy, um, the ZBrush model, uh, what I'm talking about, you see, like she has this very like, I like to call this the zygomatic pole, but it's this line here going in. You can see the separation of planes going on, you know? even though it's soft, it's there. It's not just one soft ball. It's, it, you, you can feel those planes going around, you know, giving her that wisdom um, that she needed, you know, that courage. Um, a lot of things also is uh, when you talk about soft, it doesn't, this is soft and then this is soft, right? But you have a little more like fast curve, which you can see here. Like you can see whoop, a little fast curve and then you go to an angle here. And again, this brings that that edginess to back to her instead of her being all soft little girl kind of thing. Uh, so those things is what you learn from someone like Charles being a supervisor and from Tony Fucile, you know, is those things that you like if you if you have the chance to work on productions, really pay attention how the designers talk. So you can really capture those those elements to to the character, you know. Yes, that's um, really good advice, actually. Yeah, and you can see here. I can talk a little bit about uh, facial expressions, but one thing I learned about facial expressions, and I'm not a master at it at all. Like I'm very bad at it. But I learned one thing that I can share here, which is two words. It's called contract and expand. Okay. A lot of facial expressions, what happens is there is a primary motion of contract or a primary motion of expansion. This one, you can see it, there is a contract feeling. Everything is pulling up, you see, to a contract contraction point, I would say. So when you know this, you know that things don't, don't not going to flow like horizontal. Anything in nature, to be quite honest, like, it always happens in diagonals and curves. It's, it's very rare you're gonna find horizontal parallel lines or vertical, I mean, parallel lines. So the diagonals of contraction is like this, right? It's what you do. And then if I go to an expansion, uh, this one is nice because <laughs> it's a combo of contraction with expansion, you see? Mm -hmm. So 
it again like if you separate into parts the mouth can do an expansion and then the whole eyes area can have a contraction um, if I go to a different one, this one is all expansion, right? She's all expanding very, very much so. So if anything about that, when you're looking at photo images of people doing expressions to put on their own characters, remember the word contraction and expansion. Um, I can look here if there's an, this one is very nice. This one is, uh, you know, she's a bit, a little bit of contraction here on the eyes. And then we got some expansion like this. Um, so, uh, one thing I saw some people asking stuff about clothes and I can show very fast. Um, this is a very temp clothes. I, I don't have the finished clothes for her, unfortunately, but, uh, here's her body. Right. And one thing I like to do is, um, let's say I'm going to do the dress, right? So like Charles said, I use a lot of extract, but I learned a thing when ZBrush added the dynamic subdivision. I'm going to show it here. Like, for example, I want to get this, this, this to start making her dress from this. But I'm going to crop just the bottom part so, you know, I can pull it out to make a dress. I'm going to go to the lower subdivision levels. So let's say it this. So I'm going to mask it. And um, I'm going to do extract. So, But instead of doing extract with thickness, I don't want to have to control the thickness of things. So I set thickness to zero, and then I say extract, accept. So now we have this shape here, right? And with this, I could um, just start pushing and pulling to create the base for her dress, you know? And you can do the shift click uh, to kind of smooth the topology, right? So you can do something like this, let's say. But what I love about dynamic subdivision now is that this is a one-sided thing, right? Oh, if you all try to sculpt uh, clothes before, like if you give thickness and you start smoothing things, you might lose that, that precise thickness of cloth. So what I like to do is I go to geometry and I go to dynamic subdivision, I turn on dynamic, and now there is this thickness slide which I love because again, I'm always modeling with the model single-sided, but if I add thickness, you can see now, you can have that thickness as a modifier. But if I go here and start smoothing, you can see I'm not smoothing my thickness because it's not applied to the model yet. And that is so good. Everything I do these days, I do it like this. One thing also you can do with the thickness, if you feel like you don't want that hard surface kind of transition, you can turn off this button called Pus Sub Deep. And uh, also, I probably need to clean my creases. So if it's looking hard surface like this, because you probably need to increase all. Now, it's you see, it's a bit more softer clothes. Um, and again, like I, I love this because it makes me work so clean. And I know that the thickness of my things are always going to be the same. And it's going to work. It's going to be amazing. So uh, for cartoon stuff, you want to be so clean all the time. You know, you want to work smart and clean and intentional. Uh, intentional meaning like every curve counts, right? So what I'm trying to do here again is just find ways for me to work clean and have control of my shapes. So this is sort of like, I don't know, a camisole, like a sleeping gown or something. Uh, but you can see that uh, it's very easy for me to just work with the single poly. I don't need to worry about thickness and it's gonna always look clean and nice, the thickness of my model. And if you want to export this to any other software later, you can just bake this uh, thickness. So if I'm here, right, you can see the thickness going on. If I, let's say, need to go to Marmoset to render or whatever it is, I can just go back to my dynamic subdivision and say, apply. And now that I applied, if I go here and start smoothing, you can see I'm losing my thickness because now this is real applied geometry on it. So I never do. I only applied at the moment really that I need to go render something. That's when I apply and then I can get very clean stuff on my model. Cool. Wow, that's yeah, that's super, job. super amazing. And I, yeah, I love dynamic thickness. I. I I do all my work too with dynamic, I have to. I use dynamic thickness so much that sometimes yeah. when I go to render, <laughs> I forget to apply 
<laughs> and it, it's all single sided. I go, damn it. And then I go back. And so, uh, but I love it because again, like I feel like I have so much control, control on the thickness of things on my model. Now that comes out super amazing, super great. Louis, what do you think? I mean, come I, I just, I it's love amazing. the story. I love the film. I really enjoyed, I, I said yesterday to Paul Gabriel, it reminded me of, I know you're going to appreciate this because you're a gamer also. Yeah, yeah. It reminded me of that old game, Shadow of the Colossus. That oh, you don't have any reason to rhyme <laughs> for hunting these large creatures, but they do it anyway. <laughs> I think you guys really had a wonderful series of characters in there. And this is just um, showcasing all of the hard work that goes into bringing this to life. Uh, oh, yeah. Just zoom out a little bit so we can see a little more of these people. Yeah, I think this is a good moment, I think, Charles, for, oh, here's, I didn't show this, but this is kind of like, oh, um, good. Okay. I was bringing Charles models to my scene to sort of like, so we could feel if things were in sync, if they're singing together, you know, right. like the amount of details there was in Jacob, if I had similar things on Sarah, and then the younger, it was a bit softer. So um, a lot of time as I, I was doing that all the time, bringing Charles model, since he started on the show earlier, Okay. Charles established the look of the movie when he did Jacob. So I had to honor that going forward, you know, and trying to bring those information. Well, I'll to stop mama. you right there. The aesthetic of the film, I think we all unanimously agree across the globe, is uh, par excellence and an enjoyed circumstance for all who get to see it and who get to view it. And, uh, <laughs> you know, we have only a couple of minutes left with the two of yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. But um, I, I just wanted to say this has been uh, an incredible, incredible circumstance to have you here. Ian, any last words before we ride off into the sunset with our friends from Sea Beast? Louie, I think you know what I'm going to say. Because Go for I'm it. always blown away by all these presentations because they're always super amazing. Amen. And this, just it delivered above and beyond. So just thank you so much for being here and hanging out with us and sharing your tips and tricks with everyone because everyone in the audience was just blown away and just loves these types of interactions because it lets them pick your brains just for a moment so they too can improve with their process. Yeah, so I think, it's just amazing. I, I think that's it. to the point, you know, Ian, I would just echo, I would sound like I was repeating everything he said <laughs> uh, basically at this point. It's, it's a great, great opportunity for the community at large across 190 countries to get a chance to go more intimately. And I think we provided the public with a great intimate experience oh, over yeah. the course of the last four days. And to, to have you as the final feather in the cap, as they say, has been uh, a joy and a privilege for, for myself and for Ian. Oh. I can speak for Ian in that regard, I'm sure, uh, that we're both elated to have been here to see some of your process and, and the yeah. fact that you were uh, able to provide that for the public. Yeah, thank you. What is, hey, thank you so much. Yeah. Just, thank you for having us, honestly. This has been a, a, a great pleasure and honor for us, 100%. Oh, yeah, it's been, it's been a great experience and doing with Charles, which is like, a, you know, a family at this point, um, it, it was just a dream come true, really. Well, speaking of family, I couldn't have asked for a better segue if I wrote one myself. It's unscripted, as we know, but uh, we want to say one last farewell. Ian, wave goodbye because we're going to uh, say goodbye, but don't untune that signal because we next up, the moment that the world has been waiting for, the, uh, the ZBrush team is going to be coming back. <laughs> Ian Robinson, uh, Louis Tucci, and Paul Gabery doing the thing here that we typically do at the ZBrush Summit uh, for 2022. We're going to be coming back with some uh, under the hood type of look at uh, some features we're working on. And, uh, and for those who are watching at home, you're gonna get the same kind of treatment that uh, some of our studio friends get to see some of our, our, our works in progress, as it were, uh, where, uh, where our software is concerned. So sit tight, and once again, thanks to everybody. We're gonna do some prizes when we come back, and then we'll go to the big presentation with ZBrush. But until next time, on behalf of Ian Robinson, wave yeah. goodbye, Ian. Thank you so much. Thank you so much.